Yo, I'm Carly. I'm Eureka. And this is The Bench. The Bench. The Bench. Welcome to The Bench. How's it going, fam? I'm alright. I'm cold. You can see me cozy. Jeremy's out. Bucket caps on. Oh, before we speak about the bucket caps, I think I'm afraid of lightning. Grow up. Do you, will you get electrocuted if you shower while it's lightning outside? It's a myth. But people get electrocuted. Grow up. That's all I have to say. Okay, anyway. Second point, your bucket hats. It's merchandise, fam. This is what it is. Supporting oh, yeah. local businesses. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Creating jobs. Creating jobs. Yeah. Okay. Don't, don't, there's nothing more to it. How's that. it going, though? How's the week been? Sad, Actually, you're off. I haven't been here for a while. Yeah, we were off for a week. I mean, it was Diwali, so we went back back home, celebrated with the family. Fireworks. Yeah, you know, so decided to take a week off of making content. Got to take a risk. Got to, you know, spend time with your loved ones. But now we're back. Oh, yeah. Regular programming. We also went back to our mom and told her that people are upset that we don't have a blue couch. Yeah. She didn't care. We tried to negotiate. She didn't care. She did not want it. <laughs> that auntie didn't care. She was like, that's nice for you guys. Yeah. But this is my blue couch. So but this is what we stuck with for now. Camp chairs with the yeah. camp chairs with the camp chairs. But we were down in Durban. Yeah. It was vibes. Before we get stuck into the football, T20, ICC T20 World Cup is on. Yeah. If you don't know what that is, T20 cricket is when they only play 20 overs a side. So basically, you just need to get there and start hitting for six. No, because no? that's how you lose games. But oh. yes, it is a short format of cricket and the World Cup is on. So let's go South Africa. Yeah, a lot of games are like rained out though. Mm. I think I was looking forward to watching, I think it might have been England, Australia. Yeah. And then that game got like abandoned. abandoned yeah. South Africa's first game got Rained out. Rained out. Yeah. And then we won our second game. Yeah. And our third one. And our third game. Our third game was the big game. Yeah. Our third game, we played India. So Lungin Gidi, four wickets. The players out there. It looks promising for the Proteas going forward. But I mean, they're not the only African team they in the aren't. World Cup. As the Zim, is also there. Zim had a good win. Big win against Pakistan. Against Pakistan. So, I mean, like, we rooted for the African team. That was, ma up. That was major. Major, major, That was a major, major win for Zim. Like, representing. Was, there's a lot of games that were just, like, like right there. Like, South Africa versus India was, like, it was on your, on your throat. Yeah. Zim versus Pakistan. We're actually going to play Pakistan soon as well. Yeah. So. I think tomorrow, tomorrow. Or when, when the video comes out, maybe then. So, yeah. Times are a bit off. It's a bit weird. You know, when the games are getting played in Australia, you got to wake up at like 4 a.m. to watch games or cricket, you know. So, it's a bit tough. And it's raining a lot. Right. So, I don't... Uh, I respect you still if you wake up and just watch Blitz. So, it's fine. It's so annoying. This is going to be us next year during the Women's World Cup yeah, right. when the games are at like 5 a.m. in the morning. Unless we're there in person. We are there, guys. I'm using this opportunity to link us, the bench, get us to the 2023 yes. FIFA Women's World Cup in New Zealand, Australia. Apparently, visas to Australia is like 2K. Yeah. Flights are like 30K. But hopefully, we'll be there. We will be there. Um, before we get into our bread and butter, the DSTV Prem, there was some other football happening in the in the world, I guess. In the, in the world. Specific to South African football, there were the under-23 AFCON qualifiers. So under-23, what are our under-23 boys called? I don't think they call them Ajimbos. That, I think that's our under-17. Yeah. You know. Are they just the under-23s? Our senior squad is Bafana. Uh, Bafana, Bafana. Maybe they like... Somewhere in between there, something, something. What is the in between? There's a, there's, a, there's a name there that we just need to find out. Drop the name in the comments. If you know if, it, if, if you, you know, know it, if you know it, it, if you know but it. But yeah, they're doing well. I mean, so the under 23 um, gents, yeah. not boys. The gents. Oh, the gents. The gents were up for the AFCON qualifiers. Um, they were playing Togo yeah. at Orlando Stadium this past weekend. They drew the game 2 2, but no, they drew the actual game 0 0. Yeah. But the aggregate was 2-2, two, two, and we go through on the away goals because we scored two goals away, not in South Africa. Yeah. So that's really good news for South African football. I think like our younger teams have to do well. 
for Bafana to reap yeah. the all about development. Uh, Did it reap the, the, the rewards? Reap the rewards. Yeah. Reap the rewards. Um. So the next round and the final round of games before the African Cup of Nations, the 23 African Cup of Nations, um, will be in March. And then the winners of those games will join Morocco, who is the host country for the under 23 AFCON. Um, and then, you know, they're playing for the championship, the title, and they play for places yeah. in the 2024 Paris Olympics, which is exciting. On a side note, Morocco will be hosting everything. True. I mean, they do have the facilities now. You went there, you saw it. Yeah. All those facilities, it looked like they ran everything while they were supposed to host the 2026 World Cup, but then they got robbed. So, there's that. So, I mean, I'm not mad that they're actually getting a chance to host it. I don't know whether it's because I was in Morocco that now I'm just seeing Morocco everywhere. Yeah, maybe it's one of those things. It's just break up with somebody, but then you, everything reminds you of them. The raindrops, yeah. the piece of paper, yeah. the trash can, just all of it reminds you of your ex. Um, but that's going to be exciting. I hope our under 23 boys go far. I feel like not enough, not enough people give them support. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of them are pursuing dreams. No, they're doing us proud. They are doing us proud. Um, also, in international football, the under 17, FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup wrapped up this past weekend. Mm -hmm. And talking about African football specifically, the I think they call the Falconets, like the young Falcons. I'm not too sure, but you can, again, go into those comments and keep me honest. Um, so, Nigeria went all yeah. the way to the semi-final. The under-17 uh, Nigerian women's team went all the way to the semi-finals versus Colombia. They lost to Colombia in a penalty shootout. Um, and they ended up playing in the third and fourth playoff. Um, they versed Germany. They beat Germany again on a penalty shootout, which is major because I think Germany wins. Like, Germany is one of, like, the teams, yeah. especially at that level. Um, and then just in general, Spain beat Colombia in the final hours. I was rooting for Colombia. Well, shout out to the Falcon Nets for actually making Shout out to Nigeria. Well deserved. Love to see progress in the women's football. I think there's a lot of criticism around Nigeria and like the Nigerian Federation of Football. Mm. Maybe rightly so. We don't live in Nigeria, so we can't speak much about it, right? But at every level of football, there's always a Nigerian team. Yeah. Whether it's club football, whether it's like school level, yeah. under 17, under 23, Okay, this coming World Cup. Yeah, but still, I mean, historically, they've made the continent proud. They are. So they well are. done. So it was really, it was really nice to see those young, that young team walk away with a, a medal's a medal. You get on the yeah. podium, guys. A dub is a dub, no matter what color the medal is. The so shout out to the under seventeen women's team for their World Cup run. Um, and talking about women's football, clearly, I have an agenda that I'm going to be pushing. It is the Women's CAF Champions League. Um, again, hosted in Morocco. And you just came from the America. And I did. You should have stayed. Guys, I could have been in Morocco right now. I should be in Morocco watching the CAF Women's Champions League. And yet, I'm here. Mm. Where it's lightning and thundering and I'm cold. It's tough. What's this? This is the second round of the competition. This, it's the second edition yeah. of the competition and it's like the final. So yeah. they kind of run it like a league. Yeah, yeah, where like everyone plays each other yeah. like a Super 12. Similar to the T20 World Cup. Everyone plays each other and then you go semi final Basically, final. All the tournaments are going to become going forward in the future. But I mean, it's exciting. It is very exciting. Um, there are eight teams. I'm going to give you a quick rundown. As far there are a Moroccan team. I actually forgot a name. Do you know um, when I was in Morocco, the Moroccan, she was the left winger with the braids. Yes, I know what you're talking about. Turanga. I know, I know what you're talking about. I can't remember her name. I can't remember. Fatima. She, yeah, she plays for yeah. ASFAR. I'm not going to lie, those as far fans, whether it's a men's or women's team, they are mad. Like, those are like ultra, ultra fans. Yeah, I mean, you want to know what the vibe is like in Morocco. So, I mean, is it, can you be mad about there being fans at every single game? Nah, and never. just vibes, you know, just where potentially... If good support. Games, yeah, good you support know? for the game. So, it's, it's really nice that Morocco is yeah. the host country. Um, and when you look at the clubs that are competing right now, the eight clubs, it's quite spread across the continent, mm -hmm. which is also... Like a good sign for women's football. Yeah. It's not like concentrated only in certain areas of the continent. The Simba Queens from Tanzania. I think we know uh, the Simba team in the men's Champions League, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Green Buffaloes. Guess where they're from? Green Buffaloes. Not South Africa. Green. 
and buffaloes. That's the hint. You're losing me. Zambia. Oh, okay. The flag's green. They, they have uh, buffaloes. Zambia. Um, my favorite, favorite club name I've heard in a while. The Termin Girls FC. Determined uh, Girls FC from Liberia. I know what I'm supporting. <laughs> well, surely not that team because there is a South African team there. We'll get to that last. But also Queens from Nigeria. Wadi Delga. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Degla from Egypt. Tipi Mazembe from Congo. And the defending champions, Mamelodi Sundowns, um, in trying to go back to back. History makers. Imagine you like uh, a player like um, Andile, who's just Otalia. Hmm. Won like, the AFCON. You won the first Champions League, right? Yeah. They beat the Ghanaian team. I think they were called Hasaka's 2-0 in, mm. in the original. Yeah. In the, in the first edition of it. Go to AFCON, win an AFCON. Go back to Morocco and you could go back to back Champions League titles. I mean, it's good, uh, what's the word? Good omens. South Africans right now winning in Morocco. We've been there, done that. So hopefully they can do it again. There's too much experience in that Mamelodi Sundowns team, so I'm hoping the ladies come yeah. back with the win. They are playing their first game this week. But we're here for some bread and butter, the DSTV Premiership. Ah, there was a case in Derby, Maritzburg versus Golden Arrows. Golden Arrows beat Maritzburg 2-0. Tough game for Maritzburg. Solidified on the bottom of the table. 2-0. No goal scored. John Maduka out of there. Oh. Who do you think is going to replace him? I think they already named the coach. I can't remember who exactly it was that was named, but yeah, it just seems like it's just it's switching coaches I think every season. Like, it's looking kind of tough for them, whether or not they get relegated. It's we don't know it's that a tough situation going there, in Maritzburg. You know they lost some important players, so hey, hopefully they pull themselves toward themselves. For a kids in for a kids in team. Want to see great things. I don't know whether it's world football in general or South African football, but owners are impatient. They need yeah. to learn some patience. They are very trigger happy when it comes to I'm gonna fire you. It's like there's a big red button that's labeled fire the coach mm -hmm. and all they do is sit there going you're, you're the weakest link goodbye mm -hmm. it's tough man but i mean still kind of less than halfway through the season you know there's some time for them to like pick up like we need like four wins in a row and all of a sudden you know you top eight so you never know what might happen towards the end of the season for them and the dstv prim fortunes are forever changing yeah. looking talking about fortunes forever changing Cape Town City caught a 2-1 L against Gallons. Mm. They're doing bad. I mean, we Our always... Football influences, what's Compared going on? to last season, when we were giving them a lot of credit, when you look at the log now and you realize that Cape Town City are, I think, level with the team in relegation, or they're just like two points out of relegation, it's kind of scary for a club with the amount of like support and money being pumped into it like Cape Town City to be in the position 100%. that they are. So they got some work to do, you know. They really do. Um the game was gonna end one one. Yeah. So we're gonna pick up a point. But Gallons came through clutch with the with a late winner. Ninety fifth minute. And we love to see it. Insane. Shout out Gallons for that win. Um Sundowns were back in action. They lost three no and they were like, you know what? Uno, reverse card. Wow. Three I no. You. I hear you. Three no against Royal AM. Royal yeah. AM caught a three no L against Mamelodi Sundowns. The biggest news out of Sundowns, because we haven't been here for a while, on the bench slash the camp chairs. A lot of coaching changes at Sundowns. I mean, not a lot. It's the same crowd. But you literally just... Everybody's like... Shuffling the, the or like, music, like musical chairs. Like, you get a turn or you get a turn. We'll see what actually works. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you wouldn't really know. Clearly, what's, what's, what's changed is working, you know. Interesting fact. I saw it on Twitter, the Daily News, mm -hmm. the other day, that Sundowns is the team in the DSTV Prem to beat Royale in the most times and score the most goals against it. So, if you were a betting man, this was a game to bet on. Royale and drop out of the top eight. They do drop out of the top eight. Second, it's a long time coming. Second season ain't looking... It's not looking as bright as the first. original season. I mean, they did lose their top goal scorer. They thought they could replace him with the chairman. 
How's that working out? That was a shot fire. Moving on to Amazuru versus Stellenbosch. Ususu got a dub. Mm. Finally, yeah. we broke it. We broke an eight, an eight game, no win. In the league. In the league. Yeah. I mean, it's been a good like couple of weeks for them. They made it to the final of the NTN 8, which will be hosted in Durban. Yes. And now they're winning in the league. So it looks like Coach Fox is... Uh, I think this is his first dub. Yeah, I think because he drew the game before. So now, like, he's winning, winning some games in the league, three points. It's looking bright for them, you know. Hopefully, they can get back to where they were, like, two seasons ago. You know, top top five-ish, going back mm. into, like, continental football. So They really do deserve yeah. to be. I think the owners also won continental football. Yeah, I mean, the amount of funds they've been pumping into yeah. the club, you know, and, like, the branding and, like, trying to get support back into 100%. a Durban team, you yeah. know. It's, it's as an owner, that's something that you'd want. So hopefully they can do that. You know, but they be forward. saying that the owner of Amazulu is gaining that reputation similar to other owners of other clubs who just fires when they're under. Oh, yeah, you know, get a new coach. Hopefully they can just like wake up. You know, I don't know, like find their identity again. Finding coaches is it like buy? Is it not, you know when you buy a shirt? Okay. Now it doesn't fit you. You just return it. And then you get another one. And then you don't like that one. And then you return it. You know, some people do that. Some people leave the tags on and then just go. The coaches still have their tags on. That's some nasty business. They're being returned. There's still like a warranty. What is it? A warranty or a guarantee? Mm. They're like, you bring your receipt and you can get a new one in 30 days. And then now I'm going to the shop and buying it. And then I see yellow stains. All like, the oh. coaches, are, the owners are keeping their receipts on coaches. Nah. They just... I don't want this one. I want a different one. Nasty business. Damn. And then we went into a couple of draws in the DSTV Prem. I would say this is Colin's team, but you know what? You never know. Sekukune drew 1-1 to TS Galaxy. Tough. We need points. It's looking kind of What do you mean, we? My team. Why Sekukune. are you speaking about like you're included? Because I'm, a, I'm, I'm like the number one supporter. Says so, the man with not a Sekukune bucket hat. Yeah, on. I, I, unfortunately, you know what? A man like me likes to create jobs and you know, <laughs> supply other people with funds that I have to give, you know? Okay. Make make South Africans happy in life. So I will buy your merchandise. Make South Africa great again. Right? That's but true. at the end of the day, my team Sekukune needs my support and we're not looking the healthiest at the moment, you know? Drawing games. And I don't want to be relegated. Okay. Because not a single team that I've supported has been relegated so far. Just one team disappeared. Yeah. But we're neither here nor there. We're not going to speak about it. Then we got a six, a six goal banger mm. in the PSL. Cheaper versus hashtag Rich Boy Richards Bay FC 3 3. Rich Boy, hey, in there. It's not losing sec- games. Second on the log. Second on the log. It's A. Hey. Bro, they might be playing Champions League football next season, and that's going to be scenes. I don't know whether it's the um, maiden PSL season high. Yeah. Because we saw that with Swallows when they got back, yeah. finished off second, and they were like unbeaten for like the longest time. We saw it with Royal AM, yep. and they got into the PSL, and they went on like a crazy run, yeah. right? They weren't going to win it, but they went on a crazy run. We now see it with Rich Boys. I keep on in Rich Boy, but Rich's Bay FC, who are they on the top. Mm. They're not like hanging on for dear life. They're they're there. They're there. They are winning games, drawing games, they're barely dropping Results. points. Scoring goals. And goals is what matters. So shout out Rich's Bay FC. Um and another draw that happened in the DSTV Premier Super Sport versus Swallows 1 1. Super Sport need a win. I mean the top three. Beginning of the season, they lost their games. Yeah. Gavin Hunt looks like he's turning things around. You know, Tulane Chatswa is putting in quality, quality performances. I think just him and Gavin Hunt are that, like match made in heaven. You know, because he wasn't doing things at Pirates. Yeah, and I mean, how that was like the first time in his entire career. We actually really. met someone who was like, Chatswa is my guy. Yeah, but I mean, he was always that guy. And then Pirates happened. And then let's not write people off. I think that's the lesson you learn from watching a player like him. Turn up career around late in the game i think super sport if i remember correctly so i scored the goal they were on it and then swallow said went and fetched them and said you're only good you're only leaving here with one point but i mean you Not know three. what they have a game in hand they potentially could go second 
at some point, and then they could secure Champions League football. So Gavin Hunt might also be back. Uncle Gav. Right? Back in the game. Back in the game. Back challenging in, for stuff. Back to winning ways. Um, and I think the biggest game that has happened yeah. this past week, I'm still gassed about it. Like, it is, this is, this, the feeling I have is going to carry me through my work week, honestly, at this point. The Soweto Derby. And you know what the best part about the Soweto Derby was? Is that we were there live in HD. In person. Yes. It was we mad. It was our first Soweto Derby experience. In Soweto. In Soweto. We've been to a Soweto Derby, yeah, but it, it was like really a cup count. final. This is like a, like, Soweto, a proper... like a Soweto Derby, you know? So it was insane. Getting to the game was a hazard. First, like trying to get tickets Traffic, to the game. Traffic, tickets, you know, but at the end of the day, we made it there into the stadium. 88,000 people basically in there, you know. So, sold out game though. So, all so, the tickets were sold out, but like yeah. about 80, 88,000 people, 88, in, the people in the stadium. I mean, 88,000 people in a stadium anyway. It's kind of mad to watch a single football game, you know. So, it's probably like the biggest game in Africa, I believe. You know, if you've never watched the Soweto Derby, it's probably a bucket list. It has game, to be. you know, to attend in person. Like so, in a global football yeah. sense, everyone knows the Soweto Derby is where it's at. Yeah. And you should put it on your bucket list and you should go. I met people who like grow up in Johannesburg, yeah. like have access to going to the games and have never been to a Soweto Derby. Never even attempted to go out to a Soweto Derby. Oh, it's crazy. You know, it comes soon enough, you know. I feel like I, I'm judging you. If you feel like I'm judging you, I'm judging you. Like, I'm 100% judging you. So, it's a job is where it's at. The game was worth it, though. 100%. It definitely was worth it to go. Prime and seating. Prime seating. You know, that's one thing you can always have. Count yourself lucky on when attending a PSL game. It's wherever you want. There's no rules. But, yeah. Great um, weather. The sun was shining. Mm. It was just... What a lucky day it was. Yeah. What a great day it was. If you follow the Soweto Derby, you know that the game ended 1-0 to Kaiser Chiefs. It was a, an at-home game for Pirates. Yeah. And I was speaking to some people and they said there will never be a Soweto Derby at Orlando Stadium because it doesn't have the capacity yeah. for the fans. I mean, like, what, 50,000 compared? That's the extra 30,000 people that could pack into the F&B Stadium. So 100%, 100%. you're making money. It's good for the league. You know, it's good for the branding, good for players' exposure. So I don't have anything wrong to say about it. You know, the atmosphere was probably one of the best footballing atmospheres I've been in with crowds engaged in the game. So, yeah, speechless. Oh, so great. I, I actually am speechless. Mm. There's not much, much, not much more that I could say about the Soweto Derby, but let's talk about some football, right? As a neutral, I just wanted goals. Yeah. I wanted, like, exciting football. I wanted goals. As someone who wasn't a neutral, Colin. I was a neutral. Job creation. He says, wearing a Kaiser Chiefs hat. Job creation. Okay. Anyway, as a neutral, I know I always come onto the show and I always trash Kaiser Chiefs because I love to see their fans in tears and sadness. But on the day, from my perspective, Kaiser Chiefs had a better game. They did. That, well... They did in the sense of creating more chances. And more chances. Whereas Pirates, I think, as a as a, as as a, a team unit. and the way they played football, they played the better football. But, I mean, at the end of the day, football is about results and the chances you make. And, I mean, Kazuchis just had the more open chances. And they... Hey, two clear chances two clear from chances. new signing Ashley Dupree. I really want him to score a goal. Yeah, I know. He's getting the fans on his back recently. And, Missing some big chances, but I mean, at the end of the day, he's getting in those positions, and he's still really young. So the fact that he has an eye to get in those positions and like football the, acumen, the like, the sense, the football smell, intelligence, the smell for goal and like beating a defensive line, it's there. The goals will come soon enough. Ashley missed two. I think Chiefs expected to be two 0 up by that yeah. second time. Mm. Like he put in all that work, you know, beat the players yeah. out on the wing. Beat the defenders one on one with the goalkeeper, and you're passing it to the goalkeeper. Yeah, it was tough, man. But I mean, at the end of the day, it didn't matter. No, because Chief scored. Chief did score, and that goal was insane. Probably one of the best goals I've ever seen in real life. I didn't actually, I didn't believe it when I was watching it yeah. in real life. I'm kind of sad I didn't get it on video because I had my phone out, like taking content, and then. The downside of a stadium experience is that you don't see a replay. A replay and yeah. everyone is like, we need to see that again. Yeah. No, it wasn't say. It 
was insane. I mean, Yusuf Mart, take Yusuf a bow. Magic, magic Mart. Take a bow. It's probably one of the go down, probably one of the best way to derby goals of all time. You know, so I like watching it in person. I was speechless. I just sat there. If you do like, not watch the Soweto derby, if you do not know about this goal that we are speaking about, Yusuf Mart scored a goal from inside his half. Yeah. The man got... So, the Pirates player, he lost the ball. Yusuf Mart got the ball, looked up. Keeper was obviously off his line because everyone is in that Chiefs half. Just kicks it towards the goal. And you see the, the keeper backtracking and then the ball goes into the goal. Pirates fans didn't know what to do. It was insane. It was an insane goal. So, a whole, as a whole, so it's a Derby experience. 10 out of 10. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. Five stars. What else do you do? Thumbs up. Yeah. Double tap. Mm. Go watch us away to Derby. That is all the football. Um, DSTV Prem is going on a break until December, largely because everyone is prepping and getting ready for the World Cup that is yep. coming up. But the last game before we go on a World Cup break is the MTN 8 final. Orlando Pirates versus Amazulu in a sold out Mozambique Stadium. Um, in Durban this coming weekend. If you don't have a ticket, make sure you tune in wherever you tune in yeah. to watch it. It's going to be insane. Pirates just lost the Soweto Derby. Amazulu are, are on the up. And there's 8 million rand on the line. And there's 8 million rand on the line. And if you're still looking for more football to watch, the women's, the CAF Women's Champions League is on. Mamelodi Sundowns are playing trying to be history makers upon history makers and go back to back with the Champions League win. Yes, sir. We are backing the goal, so make sure you are catching them. Um, there's going to be a lot of familiar faces from the AFCON winning team and the Mamelodi Sundowns team, so shout out to them. Drop a comment, let us know if you were at the Soweto Derby, how was it, what was the highlight for you. Kaiser Chiefs fans, you guys have been down bad. This is your time to come into the comments and tell us how you feel about it. And if you are just someone who follows the bench, Colin is really a Kaiser Chiefs fan. Do you agree with me or do you not agree with me? Guys, how many times must I say? Job creation. It came out of your mouth also. <laughs> Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This is the bench and it's all love. Until next time, bye.